Last time, on the quest to get good, I made a whole ass guide on how to get to 1800 in Solo Shuffle to help out my fellow newbies. I also said that I'd like to try out new classes and learn to heal. And, uh, well let's just say I may have procrastinated all season. It is currently 2am April 9th. The season ends on the 22nd at 10pm. I have 14-ish days to try to master a spec I barely play. And honestly, it's probably less than that due to some real life things I have to do, but I'm just going to see how far I get anyways. Even if I don't reach 1800, I'd like to at least try to learn some new skills and help out my fellow PvPers by reducing queue times. I had decided to go with Resto Druid, since it was the class I was the most familiar with, but also because I had heard that Resto was pretty strong, and I already had a decent amount of PvP gear from earlier in the season when I intended to try out Balance. I didn't quite have the right stats for the task, but it would have to do for now until I could replace it. The first day was mostly me just setting up my gear, talents, and keybinds, and practicing in battlegrounds and arena skirmishes. I was more focused on pressing buttons and keeping my hots up than anything like positioning or watching cooldowns. The next day was more of the same, practicing my keybinds and gathering conquest to fill in my last gear slots. In particular, I tried to focus on remembering to use Grove Guardians and Adaptive Swarm since I found myself forgetting to press them a lot. By the end of the night, I had a decent grasp of my keybinds, minus completely forgetting about tranquility and nature's swiftness. While doing this, I noticed that I had a tendency of gluing my eyes to the raid frames. I knew this would be a problem since I often found myself standing in a bad spot because I wasn't paying attention to my surroundings. Something to work on for tomorrow. Day 3. First thing I did was go into my add-on settings to change the ability trackers to focus on ally defenses and enemy offenses. While doing this, I found a very fun bug where switching from Omnibar to any other add-on in the options menu would freeze my game. After that, I decided to do skirmishes, recording each game to iron out my mistakes. First game, I didn't pay any attention to where the Demon Hunter was going at the start. I also realized that I should really be using Nature's Swiftness if being targeted. I also kept forgetting to use Swarm on cooldown. I didn't have Bash Keybound properly, and I like to stand in the, out in the open like an idiot. Game 2 ended up being a 2 vs 3. I just focused on using my abilities and surviving. Third game, I got my first taste of a DPS running in and dying with no defenses used. I did remember to use Trank before dying at least. Game 4, I forgot to hit the record button. Fifth game, I remembered to hit all my buttons this game. Although we still lost despite killing one of the enemy DPS early in the round because my two remaining DPS couldn't get either the rogue or the monk down before I went oom. This reminded me that I should probably learn how to be mana efficient, although I don't know how useful that would be in solo shuffle. After this game, I got bored of waiting 8 minutes in queue for skirmishes, so I did what any sane person tired of waiting in queue would do and swapped to my hunter to do solo shuffle, since I hadn't gone to 1800 on her yet. Look, if I need to prioritize 1800 on any character in the next 2 weeks, it's going to be my hunter, because I know I can actually do it. Also, DPS queues aren't so bad between 1 and 4 in the morning. Day 4. I actually started this day pretty late as I was busy with other things. I had initially intended to just do some skirmishes, but then decided to yellow it and queue straight into solo shuffle. I didn't think I had the skills yet to do really complex stuff, so I came up with a simple plan. Stay at max range and heal. I am not very good at staying at max range. I went 4-2 this first game, but it was a placement game which tends to be a bit easier, and I knew that the second game onward would be against more skilled opponents. I still had the rather major issue of having my eyes glued to the party frames all the time, so I decided to come up with a mantra to help me pay attention to the field in my cooldowns. Group, cooldowns, field. Group, cooldowns, field. Second game didn't go so well for me as I predicted. However, I could tell I was starting to get the hang of using my abilities at least. I mostly just needed to work my positioning and remembering tranquility was a button I could press during emergencies. I won't go over each and every game, just know that I was gaining more and more experience. Even though I didn't remember the mantra 95% of the time, I was starting to get the hang of paying attention to where the enemy team was in the field and trying my best to avoid CC. By the end of the night, my CR had caught up to my MMR, just shy of 1400, with a 50% win rate. Day 5. I decided to get to 1800 on my hunter to get it out of the way so that I could focus on healing. Unfortunately, I was just 7 points shy of my goal when bedtime arrived. This experience did remind me of how much I hate Cyclone though. Also, not to underestimate how fast a demon hunter can rip you in half. Day 6. Since I was only 7 points away, I thought I could just get 1800 quickly and then focus on my druid. 
Several 3-3 games of no rating change and then a lobby of the worst possible classes for me killed that hope super fast. Day 7. I'm going to get to 1800 on my hunter even if it takes me all night. Karma down. Metamorph down. I did not get to 1800 on my hunter that night. Day 8. I'm going to get to 1800 on my hunter even if it takes me all night. But actually, before I did that, I had to come up with a plan. While I did okay against Mei Li when they were teamed up with casters, I had a rough time against double Mei Li teams, especially when my other teammate didn't peel. During one of the matches, the demon hunter told me to use the diamond ice talent. He didn't exactly explain to me what he wanted it for, but while lying in bed, it occurred to me that it would be very useful to peel targets off myself. I hadn't used it before, since it worked like Cyclone, but harder to aim. But the more I thought about it, the more it occurred to me how useful it would be to eat up the duration of DPS cooldowns, or even work as a sort of pseudo-nether walk, if I could get a warrior to reflect it onto myself. And in the end, it worked! While my rating ping pong for most of the night, I found that the Diamond Ice talent really helped me with keeping myself alive against Double Mei Li. My last match was even against a Triple Mei Li lobby, but in the end I was able to pull it off to get 1800. So thank you, Random Demon Hunter. It turns out you aren't all completely brainless. To celebrate, I had a shower to wash off all the sweat, and then I did a few games on my druid before the servers went down for maintenance to help build my muscle memory for the coming week. I should probably mention I had fiddled with my UI a bit and added a bar of only cooldowns on it to help me see my cooldowns better. I also turned on friendly nameplates to make it easier to keep track of my teammates. Day 9, Tuesday. Seven days remained. I began the grind. I found that I was getting more and more used to my abilities. I often forgot to use Swiftman and Swarm on cooldown, but I was using Tranquility and Nature Swiftness with more regularity. My main issue, that was often losing me matches, was not avoiding CC as much as I should have. Sometimes this was unavoidable as my DPS would often run around a corner and I had to chase them, putting me into a bad spot. A lot of the time, though, it was my own fault. As much as I told myself to just stay at max range and heal, I would sometimes try to get a sneaky cyclone in or fail to move out of the melee when it moved towards me. Other times, I simply didn't shapeshift in time to block a polymorph or one pillar hump to avoid fear or sleepwalk. However, over the course of the night, I was slowly becoming more and more aware of my surroundings and enemies trying to CC me. I still had a long way to go, but I could feel myself getting better. By the end of the night, I was just under 1500, with a max of 1529, and a smidge over 50% win rate. Day 10, pretty much the same as the previous day, working primarily on my positioning and using abilities on cooldown. One thing I noticed while playing around the 1500 rating is just how low people's DPS tends to be, meaning long games where I'm often oomed by the end of it. One important thing I learned, by complete accident, is that when I'm in Tree of Life form, Wrath is instant cast. My mind was so blown by this new piece of information that I didn't notice the balanced druid was on the other side of the map, dying from my lack of attention. I found that a lot of the times, the enemy team would leave me alone unless they were trying to CC me. However, sometimes they didn't, and this was one of the main reasons I picked Druid, as I had at least some past experience dealing with this and could keep a level head. However, as the night wore on, I wasn't really getting anywhere, so something had to change. Generally, I did pretty well at keeping my team alive during the opening. The longer the fight went, the harder it got. This is to be expected, of course, dampening stacks up fast, but I wondered if there was a better way to rotate my cooldowns. I put those thoughts on hold though, since I was still dealing with teammates with death wishes. Whether it be pallies who didn't bubble, or people who underestimated sub-rogue combo wombos. Midway through the night, I decided to take a shower to reflect on what I could do better. I thought back to the matches against the other rest of druids and what they did to defeat me. It occurred to me that I should really be using CC more, and that I had a potentially very powerful combo of bash followed by cyclone. By the end of the night, I had crawled up to 1576. Day 11. I created a weak aura that shows the cooldown of Swiftman above my party frames. Because I am bad. I also realized while editing that I had the nameplate cooldowns add-on turned on, which I had completely forgotten about since my brain just, like, completely tuned out the fact that all these icons were on my screen. So then I turned it off. And then the grind continued. Halfway through the night, I hit 1600, which was actually my main goal since I wasn't sure if I had enough time to get to 1800. I still wanted to try to hit 1800 though, so I kept playing. I could definitely feel the difference going from the 1500s to the 1600s. Everyone did more damage and knew how to CC. The games were faster paced and kept me on my toes, much more thrilling than what I had previously experienced. However, as the night wore on, I could tell my brain was getting more and more fried. 
This will probably sound insane to most people, but I actually liked having longer queues as it gave my mind a break and reduced burnout. I could feel that I was starting to hit a wall, so I ended the night early. Day 12. This was an important day, since it would be my last day to binge play all night before the end of the season, as I worked the next two nights and would be sleeping most of Monday. This meant only one thing. I needed to get really sweaty, which means more macros and actually using my add-ons, also putting one talent point into rake to be as annoying as possible. 1500 is so slow! Ah. I eventually crawled my way out of 1500 and started to make progress. Due to some lucky games that involved someone on the other team rage quitting, I actually made it up all the way into the 1700s, but then I hit a wall as I ran into healers who actually knew what they were doing and I got knocked all the way back down to the high 1500s again. Even though I was mostly doing this for the experience, I could feel myself starting to tilt, so I decided to take a shower break to clear my head. I thought back to the guide I made in episode 3, specifically at the beginning where I discussed mental preparation and being in a good headspace. One part in particular rang out in my head, my mantra, THE mantra, the very reason I had named the series The Quest to Get Good and not The Quest to 1800. 1800 comes with winning, winning comes with being good, and being good comes with getting good. Work at getting good and victory will be yours. Repeating the mantra to myself, I knew what I had to do. I needn't worry about rating, it was irrelevant. What was important was figuring out what I was doing wrong and fixing it. I thought about how just standing in the back and healing didn't always win me games, as I had trouble healing through huge bursts of damage and would run out of mana if games went on for too long. I also thought about how being overly aggressive would lose me games, as it would often put myself in a bad position trying to CC the enemy healer and getting CC'd in return. I needed to find balance, an in-between, a way to tell when to shift from one playstyle to another. I thought back to one game I'd gone 0-6 on. What did the other healer do that I didn't? He tended to stay away from me most of the time and simply heal, but occasionally he would rush towards me and stun me before returning to his healing position. He had found his balance. I needed to find mine. Then it hit me. Am I not a druid? Isn't my entire toolkit based around the fact I can set up my heal over time effects and trends to heal for me, giving me time to do other things? It clicked. It suddenly made sense. The very world seemed to open up before me.
lot of really stressful games. But as the night turned into day and the sun rose in the morning, I managed to pull it off with three days left, which was really good because I wound up having no time to play Saturday or Sunday and I woke up Monday with a headache. I want to end this episode by talking about the learning process. As I mentioned, over the course of my games, I ran into several people who would just give up after losing two or three rounds. I did not do this. Even in the games where it became clear that I was going to go 0-6, I still tried my best. Partially because it's not really fair to the DPS on my team if I just gave up, but also because I always tried to turn losing matches into a learning experience. Even if I couldn't win, I could still trial and error a new strategy to try to last just a little bit longer than my previous round, and sometimes, to my great surprise and greater joy, it turned out that guaranteed 06 wasn't so guaranteed after all. If you want to support me, like and subscribe, and check out my other PvP videos. I'm also working on a Warcraft 3 Let's Play, which, okay, in hindsight, Warcraft 3 isn't a very good game for a Let's Play. But if you want some background noise while you level ults and remix or wait in the queue, check it out. Next episode of The Quest to Get Good will be sometime in the first season of The War Within, where I plan to push to 2100. Probably not as a healer though, since finding interesting healing footage is difficult, especially since I don't quite have an eye yet for what's considered a good play. That doesn't mean I'll give up on healing entirely though. I still plan on practicing and getting better at that role. Thanks for watching, and remember to always try your best, because you will never know what your best is unless you try.